to like this. I love cat's box, nice and hefty. It's gonna be full, that's for sure. First, right at the, in the top, well, first up, apparently if you have a cat, a pet cat, you should place <laughs> place it here while playing the Isle of Cats so that you're off your table and out of the way. Thank you, Book of Nerds, for the follow. I really appreciate it. So yeah, if you have the, if you have a cat that likes to sit in the boxes, it's a perfect game for it. They got they even put the target right there for you. A bargain quest is a renegade game and is about selling equipment uh, who and who may or may not survive. Interesting. Okay, so first up for components, we got a canvas bag full of something. We'll see. I'm going to check that out in a minute, considering I can see this artwork already. So it looks like a score pad. Very straightforward. I'll fit that under here for now. If y'all want to see that in more detail, I'll switch the view so y'all can read the details on that. But basically it gives you a place for a name and then scoring all the different colors of cats, uh, treasures, lessons, and such. Looks like we've got our boat boards right here. These do appear to be double-sided with the artwork actually being different on both sides. Um, only having played this once on Sovereignty, I don't know uh, the key difference if both sides, if the board, sides of the boards are different or it's just artwork. So you can see that at least the art around the edge of the boat is different. It does look like at first glance the rats may be the same. Maybe the, the f uh, even the bonus flag s spots look to be the same. But regardless, still cool to see the different art that they've done around the board or the boat, different sea animals. And yes, Amanda was actually part of that game of Isle of Cats that has been the only time I played, and immediately after playing that, I started looking forward to buy it. Um, and finally, it w I found it on sale, so it wasn't too expensive to pick up. And since it has a great solo mode with the rules here, I'll probably be playing it on stream sometime soon. Once I play it a little bit more and figure out the rules by myself. Unless I just learn the solo rules on stream, and you can see how bad I do. But yeah, I'm def yeah, each of these boards definitely has completely different art, both front and back, and each board is different, so that's really cool to see. And we got our rule book, and it looks like kind of like a quick reference sheet that you can keep on the table while playing. Punch boards underneath, so let's do a quick check at the rule book. So good, right in the front general gameplay, how to find who makes the game, uh, how to actually win. So that's a good kind of first thing. Okay, this this is the type of game it is. This is what you'll be doing. Uh, learn how to play if you want, if you'd like to watch videos. Gives you a link right here. Talks about all the components we should be finding in the box, which is always nice if, say, someone you lend it to someone. You're borrowing it or, of course, buying it new or selling it if it comes to that, but I probably won't end up selling this one. Uh, general setup with really good layout, both uh, saying what you're doing and the picture, which is always really helpful. Uh, talks about the different areas of the boat, the tile placement rules, overview of the, the days that were basically rounds. Uh, Talked about uh, rescue cats. Okay, so. And then different types of cards as well. And then scoring examples for the end game. And then solo mode, which will be what I need to read over the most. Uh, so, a good overview setup. Kind of walks you through with examples, which is always very helpful, Cause especially if you're learning it alone and you don't have anyone there that's teaching you. 
you want really great examples of what you're doing and what it looks like. Uh, lesson modules, treasure promos, FAQ. So a lot of good information in that. Looks like a really well laid out rule book. Um, of course, having played it once, I have a general idea of how it works. But of course, learning it by myself is going to be its own it's a different scenario. So now we got some punch boards. So let's see. Well, how many we got? And we'll do some test punches as well. I do like how the side of the box, this is the inside of the box, the box bottom. Each side also has different cats artwork talking about stuff on it. So I'll have to read through all that later, but that's kind of cool how they've done that. I'm not just keeping it plain. So let's see how well these punch. I think switching to this other view. I can show off the punch board pieces a little bit easier. So this smaller board has like basically picnic baskets, it looks like. It could be using a different name in the game. Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, so that punched really cleanly. Uh, let's see, gray on the back side, colored on the, other, the top. Uh, punch was really clean, really nice, decent thickness to the cardboard feels firm it's not going to bend very easily nice quality to it at least so I'm going to pause the music so we can listen to that snap some people like to hear it some don't but I like how clean it sounds when it's snapping you can tell it has decent tabs but not so thick that they're going to tear I'm not, there's not, yeah, these are coming out very easily, but not falling out. So I've no, I don't expect it to tear at all, which is always great. You don't want the paper on the facing with the artwork to actually tear at all. And considering they put the artwork in the top of the box of put your cat here, they kind of expect some of these components to be possibly messed with by a cat. So of course they need to be thicker, higher quality. And now we've got some of our cats, all the tiles. These are more the, uh, uh, what's the correct word for it? Tetrominoes. Oh, that one's sticking a little bit, hopefully. Okay. Yeah, so of course, anytime you have custom shapes like this, getting them to punch cleanly can be a little bit difficult no matter how, how well it's cut. but they are seeming to pop pretty easily once you get the right angle on it. Just because of those corners, they will start to catch. So we'll, I'll wait to punch everything, because um, you probably don't want to sit here for half an hour watching me punch every little piece. So what I'll do instead, try to show you each punch board, show you the different color of cats, some of the different shapes some of these treasures and, and uh, special pieces you can pick up during the game. Because I know some of the scoring is based on having groupings of the same color cat. Because I remember Amanda complained when apparently I was picking up the color cats she wanted when we played together online. Uh, so we do have, uh, we'll say the, the orange cats, the golden cats, whatever you want to call that. We have this nice lavender purple. Of course, we got like the Z shapes, the overhook, the bridges, the L's, the W's, the T's. So a lot of fun shapes to try to fit together. And they're not all the same size either. They're not all like, oh, they're exactly four or five blocks. There are some that are smaller, some that are bigger. And the way you have to fit them together makes for a very interesting puzzle when you play. And we got these kind of leafy green cats and some like extra artwork like they've gotten into some flowers or something. Of course the bottom of these boards have these fish as well. And then we got some kind of gray or kind of the black and white cats. Maybe it's white, maybe it's gray. 
Maybe it's silver. We'll see. You got the reds. Kind of makes me think of like a red fox. The coloration of it, or the or a red panda. And then we got a couple of these white ones with kind of a, almost a reddish brown stripe hue on the back of it. Definitely different enough from the actual gray ones, which have the striped tail versus a striped back. So it, it does seem like they do a pretty good job of differentiating not just color, but a little bit of variation in the artwork style between colors for those who might have colorblind issues. But being that I'm not colorblind, I can't tell you for sure how great that is. But let me know if you know any better, if you think they're varied enough or not enough. And then we have this scoring the island tile that pops out, uh, tracks the rounds, And that is double-sided. I'm not sure if there's a key difference between the two sides, because I see five and five. So both sides might do the exact same thing. Who knows? If you do, tell me. OK, time to see what was in the bag. So some of those cats over here. The other tiles were already punched. And here's that close-up of that score pad. Um, seems pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Gives you plenty of room to write the scores in them. Um, you could either fit it tightly, use it for multiple games, or spread it out across it. So it's up to you on how extensive you want to write on these. Pretty thick enough pad. So even if you start to go through it a lot, you could condense your writing down and fit even more on. Now we got this nice large canvas bag. It's probably a good six inches wide, eight inches tall. And inside of it currently are decks of cards. And we also got oh, quite a few Ziplocs and some cat meeples and a little pencil, kind of the, the golf size style pencil very short very simple but easy to use so you actually always have a writing utensil on hand when you're playing the game so to keep score which is helpful okay so we got uh so a couple of these slightly larger ziplocs and then we have a bag of kind of medium sized ones a little bit smaller than sandwich size for those who use just off the shelf of blocks. There's about so with the ones in that there's about nine of that size. So maybe enough to split up cats or token types or even cards or something. So we'll see how it best recommends to organize this later. I'm gonna check out the cat meeples first. different colors. Um, of course we got the silica gel to keep things dry, set that aside. Some people like to keep it with the game. I find it overall it's not super necessary. But if you do, do you. So first off we got this boat. I believe this is the round tracker. Uh, there's a red handprint almost in paint dripping down on it. Both sides. Nice kind of intricate cut so you can see the sails and the bottom of the boat. Kind of cool that way. Then we got uh, five different colors of cats. Uh, interesting that it's a one to four player game and there's five colors of cats. Um, especially since, well maybe these, I'll have to see what, how these are used. Because I don't recall using them in the online game. So let's check out the actual shapes. So we got the green ones. They seem to be kind of walking with their tail up in the air. Nice wooden tokens that these are. Each of these, of course, are in their own Ziploc. Some reds also walking their t tail curled forward. 
appears to be six pieces for each of these colors. Let's see if I can get this orange bag open. So these are kind of the ready to pounce style cats. Again, orange, six of them. Next up will be the, kind of these teal. Also somewhat pounced down, but this time with the rear and the air, kind of a different style of pouncing. But again, like I talked about, it seems like they've done what they can to not only do different colors, but different shapes for each color. So it's easier to identify if, you have, if there's any colorblind issues at the table. And these last ones are purple. Uh, kind of the cat more sitting down with the tail on the air. So overall, nice quality, nice variety of shapes, and the colors are nice and vibrant. So compared to everything else on the box art and what we've seen so far, definitely stays in line. They didn't go with dull colors that don't fit the bright, fun family theme of saving cats. So see if I can quickly repack all of these into their own little Ziplocs, and we'll get to the cards. Yeah, fancy kitties indeed. <laughs> so what was Amanda streaming? Amanda, if you're still here, what were you streaming? If not, if you were hanging out with her, let me know. Was it something with chat, or was she doing something solo? Was it uh, a craft stream, doing some artwork? What were you all up to with Amanda? I can get these kitties down into the bottom of the corner of that bag, so it closes. Streamed boba game coming from Tete Wu played with John. Oh, nice. Uh, what was it the Boba Mahjong? Is that what was the name of it? Definitely looked interesting. Very unique theme. I actually just picked up... Um, here's the floor. Uh, Cat Sudoku from Tete Wu. And then they played Decathlon. Okay. Yeah, uh, the Bobo game definitely looked interesting. And of course, I look forward to the Cat Sudoku soon too. And it, it having a solo mode means I can play it on stream with y'all. And hopefully you can play along either if you have your own copy or hopefully I can find a way for to share a PDF or something where you can play along. Uh, so sorry, I was just started to open these cards without talking about it. I should have looked. At least the, I just used my knife on that first pack, but it does look like these packs have the quick tear option across the edge of it. Really hard to see, but it does have that quick tear on it. Nice quality. Uh, you can tell it's decently thick card. Uh, the back is all like this so far. Let's look at the faces, see if there's different decks or if it's just different color cards. So all these have a purple edge, all of these have yellow so far, and then the rest of these have that blue edge. Put it right there. Let's see what the other decks have, and then we can split the decks as need be. This time I'll try to catch that tear edge. There we go. You can kind of see it. It's one of those super thin ones that goes all the way around. Easy release, which is nice. Uh, Tay uh, Tay provided Monique a printable page for play along. She did so. Reach out to him. Nice. I'll definitely do that. Um, I think I've connected with him on Facebook. If not, I can easily connect with uh, Monique and either go from there to either get what she has or.
get contact info direct from her. Either way. But that's great to know. I appreciate that, James. And now just dividing the different colors. I don't know if I'm supposed to be stacking these together or not, or if they're different sets. So I, I'll try not to mix them between. Because it does look like the... Okay, so these look like reference cards right here. So for sure, I'll be keeping these set aside. Uh, it says cat reference, of course, the, the five colors. Um, so it said orange, red, green, purple, blue. So I guess the ones that looked like they were grayish on the punch boards, I guess were very light blue. And the back side of this, it gives uh, the map reference. So on some of the boats, we talked, uh, I kind of pointed them out, but not fully. There's these little maps around the board. Um, so I believe the ruling is if you place a cat of the corresponding color onto its matching map color, uh, you get a bonus. And so as you're drafting these tiles, they fit into your boat in different orientations as you choose. I believe the primary rule is each new cat has to touch an existing cat in some way. So of course, like say this orange one got laid on top of that orange map, I'd get a bonus by picking up one of the special treasure tiles, if I remember correctly. So there's four of these reference cards. Now I can set those aside. Let's see what else is in this next pack and see if any of these decks mix together or if there's something else going on with it. So again, I use that quick tear on that one because it does work really nice. Okay, so this time there's some brown, quite a bit more green. Um, it's hard to see. Some of the, a lot, most of these have a different name at the top of the card of some sort. So I don't know if they're different, like uh, game setup modules of some sort, or if you actually use all of these in one game. Like I said, I've only played once that was online, so I didn't have to worry about the setup. And I know we didn't use all of this stuff. Um, so we'll take, take a quick look at some of the different stacks. Um, so like this one says it's a place grabber game. I guess two fish for each. Oh, shacks on your boat. A couple of those. Uh, this one's a salmon hunter. It just basically says the same thing, but the cat's in different placement on it. Uh, place your next cat or treasure anywhere on your boat which is can be helpful if you're trying to if you're kind of stuck at the edge of a boat early game and you want to jump to the other side of the boat really give yourself a chance to spread out because part of the rule is you do have to place your new cat touching another cat so if this breaks that rule for you at the beginning of the game it really opens up your placement options for the rest of the game uh, place your next cat or treasure anywhere uh, look out draw draw cards okay draw cards and cards so depending on I guess it's a module based thing because we did not play using cards except for some bonus cards so you only got something at the very beginning so I guess those white with kind of red brown stripes on the back are were these O shacks um, so there's different ones like take any of them looks like all of these say that they're probably special cards that get shuffled in if you're using those cards or those tiles. Um, the stack basically just called out the five different colors. I wonder if there's like a randomization way that is saying, hey, certain players are this, or you're drawing these to indicate something special as you're using them. Again, I don't know for sure. So now we got these stacks left. Let's go with this one. Uh, so the backs of this are the purple advanced solo lesson. Okay. So we do know what this stack is at least. Uh, so there's some solo and advanced solo in this. So some of the solo stuff is some scoring stuff like five points for each color cat where you did not have at least one cat of that color touching any treasure. Okay. Two points for cats in the largest family. So that's grouping cats together, touching each other on the board, on the boat. 
10 points if you have less than 9 treasures. 4 points for unspent fish. 5 points per visible rat. Interesting. Um, I wonder if the solo rules completely changed the rat rules because at least the game I played, rats were negative points, so you were incentivized to cover them. Uh, 5 points for every cat over 15. Okay, so that you want to get a lot of the cats as five points for each color cat where you do not have at least one cat of that color touching the edge of your boat. Okay, so that's kind of filling the middle of your boat. High scoring lesson scores twice. Three points per filled room. Five points for lonely cat. A lonely cat is a cat not touching any other cats of the same color. Three points per lesson card you have. Score the largest family. Score the second largest family. Uh, three points per common treasure. Uh, three points per cat not touching any treasure. Points uh, per covered treasure map. Points for family of cats. Points per cat touching the edge of the boat. And points for each color cat where you do not have at least one cat of that color touching any visible rat. Oof, it's a mouthful. There's some solo cards, so that'll be something for me to keep to the side since I'll be learning the solo mode soon. Okay. Oh, and now we got more solo stuff. Uh, this is solo basket. So I guess it's different, uh, different style of solo modes. So these are all solo basket. Probably won't read every single one, but we'll scan through them. So it looks like they have some numbers. Show off basket numbers. Some different symbols. Some of the different treasures. Next up, we did those two. Those didn't actually say solo on the back of the first one. Okay, so this, these do not say solo on the back. These are kind of like the first two few stacks we did that were blue on the back. Uh, yellow facing, so talks about treasures, um, taking any, tre uh, any treasure or any common treasures. Oh, so there's special treasures or the common treasures. So there's a difference in the color. So kind of the gold is, is the the rare ones and then the standard ones are kind of a more reddish copper hue for the treasures for common so these allow you to kind of choose between if you want the rare ones or commons and they different differentiate in the shape as well i believe the rare ones are bigger so it seems a lot of these have kind of the same and now we're getting to showing some of the common uh, take any two small treasures, which are kind of the common based ones, or take any, or pay a fish to take any two common. Uh, so this is saying that taking those exact shapes, or pay a fish to take your choice, essentially. Okay, so that's that stack. Okay, next up. We have, it's a blue back, so kind of standard cards. We got kind of drawing cards. Uh, take tile from the bag at random until immediately, and immediately place it on your boat. So instead of basically drafting from those already out on the table, you're taking something from the bag. So no one else has that option typically, unless you're playing a card like this. Discard a permanent basket. Move up to three cats to different fields. Gain fish, gain fish. Ooh, giving a chance to take two cats instead of one. Uh, taking tiles from the bag at random and immediately place them in fields. I wonder what the fields are. Uh, gaining baskets. They've integrated different artwork from the treasures to the different cats along the edges of these cards, which is kind of cool. And that's a nice extra little touch to it. Because, you know, uh, any cat game should embrace kind of what it feels like to, ha to have a cat around. And yes, Meeple Comrade, I am currently unboxing Isle of Cats. You're correct. 
Um, so right now I'm just kind of going through the di different decks of cards that came in the box, showing them off, showing off the artwork. Um, so yeah, you can see the pile of stuff we've kind of pulled aside and I'm getting to the cards right now. But thank you for being here. How are you today? And how have you been? Uh, one of the next stacks. So Greenback says family at the bottom. Oh, there's a couple of the blue cards right there. So there's a side. So these talk about doing okay. So what have you been up to this week? What have you been playing? Or is there anything you're about to play that you're looking forward to playing? Because it's Friday, it's the weekend. Hopefully there's something we get to look forward to doing. So this deck has uh, pick a color points per cat of that chosen color touching the edge of the boat. Points based on if you have one more each color cat touching the edge. So a lot of these are, of course, the points and bonus cards. 10 points if the middle row of your boat is full. Uh, points if there are no empty spaces at the edge of your boat. So I believe these are the cards that, instead of these family cards, I believe are what we played with when I played on Sovereignty, the only game I've played before. So I, I remember seeing some of these cards. And these typically score at the end of the game on top of scoring. Uh, the groups of cats that you have. I believe how how it happened is we were dealt like two and picked one or something like that when we were playing. Uh, I can't remember for sure. But of course, hopefully I get to play, learn the solo mode of this soon and stream it for y'all in one of the upcoming weeks. So this deck, playing blue back matches some of the other ones we've looked at already. And these also look like scoring cards. Um, I wonder if the, the family ones that we were just looking at are more straightforward than these. Maple Conrad says, not playing a lot, not a lot of people to play with around here. Oh, well, I'm sorry about that. Um, I know we're on online a lot, so we do what we can to get offline and play with people that are around us, but it, it does make it harder when not as many people are around but of course if there's something you're looking to play online that would be easy for us to either do in like discord or like all the different stuff feel free to reach out i'm always open to trying new games or just playing with other people that around because i enjoy gaming of course and if it would help spread joy and give help you out to play a game together feel free to reach out Okay, so we got, like I said, we got more scoring cards. And like each of these are kind of different artwork themselves in the way they've set up be it cats or rats or the treasure shown on them. So like I was saying, I really enjoy how like they've made it look like, okay, if you have a cat, they're going to be all over the table, all over the game, messing with everything. And so that's how they've done, shown the artwork. The, Everything, all the cats are everywhere doing, getting in the way, being everywhere on the cards. So the, the way they've integrated the cat theme is really fun in my opinion. So it's a lot of different scoring cards. But it's hard to know all the different options. Unless you play this a lot, of course. And then of course more of that same blue backed color. So I wonder if you mix these in or anything. These seem to show numbers and boots so far. I wonder if those are different treasures or points you can collect in certain ways. Like I said, I've only played this once, and that I think it was with the family scoring bonus cards, so there's a lot for me to learn and experience with this game, which I really look forward to. So yeah, it looks like most of these basically baskets or boots or that other symbol in some way cats of artwork of course strewn about them like, like the other ones and then we didn't look at these yet it looks like more point cards uh, public lessons so it looks like scoring options to have for everyone to use in some way and then Conrad, I don't know if you were here earlier when I showed them, uh, so I'll put them back on screen so you can see them. But this did come with all of these really cute 
well done wooden cat maples of different colors which is really nice and then of course we talked about all these punch boards how nice the components were how they snapped out very easily not very little risk of tearing uh, you can see just the edge of the tab that was used to cut it but not so extreme it's going to be an issue when you place all these tiles together and then of course you got like the fish and the treasure tile tokens to punch out i'm going to be punching all of this later because there's what one two three four six full punch boards of cat tiles to punch um so yeah that's i love cats if you have any questions about anything you want to see up close let me know i'll pull those back into view Yeah, def definitely great different colors in this. The different cat colors from from the special ones uh, that had a special name. The the reds. They called this the blue. At first glance, they look more gray. Um, but of course, I can see how they've done just that very light hue of blue in the fur. We got these green ones the lavender slash purple and the goldish orange and then we showed off the boats which I can, I can put them in closer view here too how they have the rats in the middle each of these boats had different artwork here in the corners kind of like like this um, but it did look like from end to end inside the boat they all looked to be the same but they do have like uh, scoring references on them, which is very helpful. And then of course, the, all of these tiles can be thrown into this bag, so you don't have to necessarily have to put them back in ziplocs, which is very helpful. Um, it being that you're throwing everything in a bag and it has other ziplocs, box has no insert. Not a huge deal. Um, honestly, I kind of lean into the side of not having an insert, as long as it has these ziplocs and such, because most inserts I've found are not adequate enough. They don't hold things in place to my liking, so I'm still going to Ziploc or bag everything in a certain way. So I'm, I'm kind of glad they didn't necessarily waste plastic or extra cardboard just to throw in an insert that I'm going to have to throw away. Um, and of course, just the, the favorite, probably favorite unnecessary thing that they did is the target in the top of the box for cats. The, the cat setup rule. If you have a pet cat, place it here while playing. Like I think I even saw someone post online like trying to put their cat in it and the cat wouldn't stay there. So of course, a cat's not gonna do what you want it to do when you want it to. Uh, let's see. And then for those who missed it earlier, I was fortunate enough to pick up some stickers this past week or get some ordered some holographic play game spread joy stickers um because I, I plan to hopefully since it should be in theory somewhat safer um i know for those who don't want to and don't feel comfortable enough uh don't feel obligated but i i plan to go to some of the con uh, game conventions this year uh, like origins gen con probably packs you as well and for those who like to play games and spread joy i plan to have these stickers with me to hand out and share with people so you can show off that you too spread joy while playing games so yeah ho hopefully i can see some of y'all there uh, and if not of course stay safe whatever you're doing or if you don't feel you can make it to any of the conventions reach out to me we can probably set something up where i could mail you one of the stickers because Mailing a sticker like this in an envelope wouldn't be that hard to do. It's not like shipping a large game. We can still ship small envelopes without paying exorbitant uh, box shipping costs that from overseas that they're dealing with right now. So I'm, I'm happy I don't have to deal with that. But I know so many publishers are dealing with that right now. And games are potentially going to start getting a lot more expensive. So I'm enjoying prices as they are now for what's already in the states and playing what i can showing it off to y'all so y'all can decide what games best fit your play style and what 
you can best spend your money on. But of course, that's up to you what fits you best. So I can't tell you if it, the, the game is perfect for you, for you or even the cost is right for you. But we can show off the game and join them together. So I do appreciate everyone who showed up today, everyone who stayed after the raid, all the new followers. And I do hope everyone has a wonderful weekend. And as always, play games and spread joy.